evening. It's Tuesday, October 6th at 6 p.m. And this is the regularly scheduled city council meeting. If you're joining us by Zoom, um, welcome. And we're glad to, that you're here. Um, we start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Council members are present. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, are there any changes to the agenda, including additions or deletions? No way. Thank you. So we're already on item number five, moving right along. Um, the 2020 Mayor's Water Challenge announcement. So I'm excited to share with our community tonight that in the 2020 Mayor's Water Challenge, sponsored by the Wyland Foundation, the city of Montrose did quite well. We placed fourth in our population category of cities in size between 5,000 and 29,900 people. And that was out of 379 cities in our size category. So placing in the top five at number four is something we can be really proud of. We had 1,300 pledges by our citizens to cut their water use by four and a half million gallons as part of this ninth annual National Mayor's Water Challenge. So here locally, we ran a little contest in association with the Wyland Foundation, where the city of Montrose purchased a geyser system, which is a portable shower system that uses less water than many portable shower systems. And what's really cool about the geyser system is that's a product that's made here in Montrose. And we worked with the Wyland Foundation and we asked them to pick randomly one of our participants because we didn't have all 1300 names. That's with the foundation. We asked them to send us the name of, of a random winner. And I'm excited tonight to announce that Mr. Gary Robertson is the winner of the Geyser System Portable Water Shower Unit. And the city of Montrose is gonna be getting in touch with Mr. Robertson tomorrow. So I wanna thank all the citizens who participated and pledged to, to conserve the valuable resource that is water in our community. Thank you very much. Great. Next on our agenda is a call for public comment for non-agenda items. So this is, I'll be informal and then I'll read the formal language. This is the time on our agenda where we take comments for things that are not on our agenda. If you have something to talk about that's on our agenda, we ask that you do that on that item. And when we take non-agenda items, those are usually really helpful in letting um, city staff and city council know what kinds of things our citizens are thinking about and what kinds of things our citizens are concerned about. And while we don't um, respond during the meeting because it's not an agenda item, it usually allows us to follow up individually with the individual making that public comment. With that said, it's my understanding that there may be folks who are here tonight to give their public comment about proposed um, possible apartment complex development going in in our town. And I'll say, well, we welcome your comments tonight they would not be part of the official record for that project because that public comment period hasn't started. That would happen if and when a developer submits a proposal for planned development. And then at that point, there's a public comment period with a beginning and an end. It lasts 15 days and it's published. And during that time, all public comments are accepted and taken into the record. So if you want to comment about that, again, you, you, would have, you can come tonight and talk to us about that, but it won't be part of the public record because that hasn't happened yet. And so you may want to consider um, that your comments will have the most impact if you hold on to them until the, the process plays out. And when and if there's a development plan, then you can um, make your public comments at a time where they'll, they'll count. That being said, I will read the official formal language for public comment. 
which says the following. The call for public comment agenda time is a time when concerned members of the community may publicly, publicly voice their concerns and discuss items of interest. Please note that no formal action will be taken on the matters raised during this time. Comments made during this time should be addressed to the council and pertain to matters of at least general importance to the city and its operations. Please be aware that neither city council nor city staff are expected to respond or engage in discussion or debate. Personal attacks and disagreements, personnel and employment matters, the use of profanity or ethnic, racial or gender oriented slurs are prohibited as is any disorderly conduct which violates state or local law and shall not be permitted. So all of that being said, are there folks tonight, and I'm looking to, um, to our technology director here, are there folks tonight who have joined us by Zoom who may be raising their hand um, or asking to be unmuted and make comment to city council tonight? I see none, Madam Mayor. Okay, great, thank you. Well, that was a lot of rigmarole then for nothing. No, um, I, I hope that it helps explain the process and that people feel like we wanna be as transparent and forthcoming about the process with folks so that they understand the best way to communicate with their city government through their elected leaders or through the city staff. So thank you. Okay, the next thing on our agenda item is um, number seven, which is approval of minutes. This is council consideration of the minutes of the September 15, 2020 special city council meeting and the September 15, 2020 regular city council meeting. Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the September 15, 2020 special council meeting and the September 15, 2020 regular council meeting as presented. Second. Great, we have a first and a second. Did anyone see anything that needed to be changed or any problems with that? Okay, then please go ahead and record your vote electronically. Okay. Great, thank you. The motion passed, the minutes were approved unanimously. When we do our voting electronically, all the audio cuts out while we switch over to the electronic voting system. So if you're watching along and it just gets very quiet, it's just about a 30 second pause while the vote is counted electronically. And then we come back to the, the live feed. Okay, next. Oh, this is such a fun part of our meeting is um, the youth council applicant interviews. So tonight we have a number of, of young uh, high school folks who have applied to be on the Montrose Youth City Council. And I will turn it over to our Youth Council coordinators, Michaela Henry and Kaylee Rillenberg for an introduction. Or if I'm supposed to jump right in and start interviewing them, I can do that too. All right, thank you, Madam Mayor. Can you hear me all right? We sure can. Excellent. All right. So for you tonight, we have seven youth city councilors coming before you with applications this evening. Um, and they should all be on the call right now, too. I think you all should have a list of the names presented um, who will be appearing for interviews this evening. And so however council likes to proceed, if you'd like to just go down that list, I think we can go ahead and begin with those interviews. Great. And just to clarify, do we have seven tonight or six tonight and seven total? Thank you. So there are six tonight, seven total. Okay, good. I was afraid I might have missed somebody. Fantastic. Well, we've got a nice system here where we are just going to go in order of the information in our packets and in order from one end of the dais to the other. So I'm going to turn it over to my fellow counselor, Roy Anderson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, let's see, I think the first person in our list is Cheyenne Storrs. Can we debate her? <laughs> Thank you. Hi. She's on. Oh. I was hoping we'll get... No video, but... No video. Uh, okay. Well, that's okay. Can I, can I... Cheyenne, do you do you want to be on video or you do, do you have a phone? I'll go on video. 
That would be fantastic. Yeah. It helps us really put a face to a name as well, if you don't mind. And if you it have says it. I video. <laughs> okay, we're working on this IT. Is this what you guys do all day long in class already? Now you do more of it at night? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should be able to um, start your video now. Hi. Oh, I can't hear you. All difficulties. <laughs> there. Okay. Hey, it. Can you hear me now, Cheyenne? Yes. <laughs> can, can you hear okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Well, I, I want to thank you for your application, first of all, and um, your credentials look great. So I have a question here. Uh, each candidate will be asked a question by one of the city councilors. Where do you think you could help the city, the youth city council, make connections and build relationships in our community? Hmm, I think I can help build relationships with the lower income families and with my fellow peers and the older generations. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cheyenne. All right, Gracie uh, Hassenpiller. Hi. Uh, Hi, Grace. It doesn't look like it's letting me turn on my camera. Oh, We're working on it. We'll see if we can let you in that way also. Should have the ability to start her camera. Can you try it now? Um, it doesn't look like it's letting me. Okay. We're working on it. All righty. It might be something on uh, her PC side. We might just need to move. Okay. Forward. I think we'll move along and we'll um, and we'll we can hear you really well. So we'll we'll go with that tonight. All righty. Perfect. Hi, Grace. Dave Bowman here, and I've got a question for you. And and I do want to know that, uh, or you should know. Tell mom and dad they cannot help on this. I I, I know your dad and tell. Were you able to hear that, Grace? No, I think we had a microphone issue there for a moment. I'm sorry, Mr. Bowman, would you please? We lose her. I think yeah, doing this I just you guys now. Okay. I think we're doing this just so all the adults in the community can see what our students must go through every day from eight to three attending what virtual school looks like. And our teachers. And our teachers and why so many people are frustrated by this. <laughs> and our teachers. <laughs> okay. So are we there, Grace? Yes, sir. All right. I've got a question for you. Can you give an example of a time when you worked with someone whose opinion differed from your own? And if you didn't hear me before, if you sound like a lawyer, you're going to be in trouble. And in curfew is not an acceptable uh, subject. <laughs> All righty, don't worry, my parents are upstairs, so that's not going to be a problem tonight. Um, I feel like I work with people who have difference of opinions all the time. Um, I feel like a good example would be like at school, if we're having a group project, um, especially these days, some people will, when we're in the group project and we're working on it, um, 
they will take their masks off and stuff. And of course, right now, when we're this close in school and we're in a tiny classroom, I mean, it's against the law and it's not a good thing. We're, we've already had to shut down school pretty much. So um, my opinion is that I would like them to keep their mask on and sometimes they don't want to do that. Um, so I just handle that by continuing to work with them and I usually just space myself out, spread out from them so I can maintain my social distancing and usually the teacher will come by and tell them to put their mask back on. But I could feel like that's a common thing that we've had difference of opinions in lately, especially. Very good, Grace, thank you very much. Great of course, thank you. So next on our list is Gunnison Clamp. So if we can invite Gunnison into the meeting. Hi, Gunnison. Hello, uh, just a second, trying to start my video. <laughs> All right, I keep pressing the start video button and it's not doing it like the other two participants for me, but uh, can you hear me okay? We can hear you great, and I have I have the okay. honor of getting to see you this morning when we opened that time capsule, and I'll talk about that a little bit later in our meeting. And you, right. did, a, you did a great job. I know speaking is um, is something you're really good at. So here we go. I'm going to ask you a question. In your opinion, what are the most important qualities for a youth city councilor to have? Well, uh, I sure am a lot better equipped to ask this question, sorry, to answer this question than I was a year ago. I learned so much about what's required of a counselor in my past term. And among other things, uh, number one, of course, is the ability to lead. Um, as a role model for, for youth in Montrose, I have the ability to lead and to lead well. And also, I think uh, critical thinking and decision-making skills are as when you're a Montrose Youth City Councilor, of course, you're not making decisions for yourself, you're making decisions for, on behalf of all the youth in the city of Montrose. So being able to make good decisions um, on behalf of them, as you think they would want those decisions made, uh, is definitely important. Uh, there are definitely a few other qualities. Of course, you gotta be able to work uh, as a team uh, being able to uh, socialize well with members of the community, ask them about what they might want to improve, what they might want us to work on. Good communi communication skills are as well. So a multitude of things. And uh, all of those are important qualities for a youth counselor. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next person is Josephine Coulter. Hi. Hi, uh, you can hear us all right, Josephine? Yes, I can. And do you go by Josie or Josephine? Uh, Josie. All right. Now we can even see you. <laughs> what is the one thing that you would like to change in the community and why? Um, I would say one thing I would want to change in the community would be um, the the drug use. I think that can be seen throughout the community. Um, I would really want to um, put a, a, an end to it, but you know, it's some, that's hard, and maybe just not as much of it because it can be really evident and seen in some areas of town and I just I would really like to change that to better the community good thank you I think that's great thank you all right next we have Zach Oldroy hello hi Zach hi all right good to see you this is a uh, counselor Dave Frank and my question for you is, what do you think is the biggest challenge or issue facing youth in our community today? Um, I 
I think, especially during this uh, pandemic, um, we, uh, at least um, teens, are struggling a little bit with communication and not being able to see their friends. And um, I think um, I, I would want to see that. Um, I think we could help that through things like Zoom, doing fun activities online, um, and just trying to increase communication to those who feel that they're kind of left out right now. Excellent answer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, back to me, I guess. <clears throat> and Mari uh, Wilson. Hello. Hey, good evening, Mari. This is Councillor Roy Anderson. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you guys? Oh, good. We can see <laughs> Sorry, you. Sorry, my dad just came in. Okay. <laughs> I guess no you can hear us. <laughs> no coaching. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what is one of your greatest achievements? Tell us uh, how you achieved this goal. Okay, for me, I used to do competitive dance a couple years ago, and one of my greatest achievements from that was winning first place overall at a competition. Like so many times I've gotten third place, gotten second place, but the first time I got first place, that was really a big achievement for me. And how I achieved that is like, when I started at getting third place, I scheduled more practices with my teacher and I did my own workouts on my own. And then I eventually got second place. And then I just stepped it up another level and I eventually got first place. Great. All right, thanks. Thank you. Great. Michaela, do you have any words you wanna say or do you want me to, to um, wrap it up? Sure, I would just thank all of our applicants for coming tonight and thank city council too for asking those questions. And um, if council has any questions for Kaylee or I as coordinators, we'd be happy to answer those as well. Well, I think there's six or eight, right? <laughs> yeah, we have a, you, you guys have to answer the rest of the questions on the list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for the work that you guys put into organizing this. And um, thank you to all of the youth who have applied to be on our youth city council. We appreciate you making the time this evening to join us. We appreciate you taking that bold move in front of us and in front of the public to answer a, a question without knowing ahead of time what that was gonna be. And we really think you all did a great job. And we're so excited to get to know you all more um, through this next year. So thank you. Any other words? Great job. Yep, excellent. Okay, next on our agenda item is resolution 2020-20, which is a council consideration of resolution 2020-20 setting November 3rd, 2020 as the hearing date for the annexation of the Woodgate edition number four. I will turn it over to senior city planner, Amy Short. Hi, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm gonna share my screen here a moment, my presentation. Sorry, now I'm having technical difficulties on my end. Can you see that okay? We sure can. Yep. The, the full screen or just the present, the whole screen of it? The full screen the logo right now. Now there's okay. the, now that we can see your, your menu items as well. All right, that's gonna have to do. <laughs> That'll work. All right, so this is the annexation schedule for the Woodgate edition number four. Um, we had the city council work session overview on September 14th. And then tonight, as you mentioned, is the resolution to set a hearing date. We'll have the planning commission zoning hearing coming up on October 14th. And then the first and second reading of the annexation and zoning ordinances in November. So this parcel, the annexation is located east of South Townsend Avenue and west of Woodgate Avenue, as you can see, see by this orange parcel, and it's in between Oak Grove Road and Odell Road. 
So this parcel is just under half an acre. It is within the city's urban growth boundary, the city water and city service area. Um, it is urbanizing in this area. More than one sixth of the perimeter is contiguous to city limits. It's actually surrounded by city limits on all sides. Um, the annexation of this property will actually clean up an orphan parcel of land that's surrounded by city land. And the city is applying for this annexation on behalf of the landowner um, in support of the upgate, upcoming Woodgate Road realignment project. So the proposed zoning for this parcel is going to be B3 at the next planning commission meeting. Um, the B3 general commercial district is intended for a large variety of uses that require large storage areas to conveniently serve customers. And as you can tell from this zoning map, um, the zoning of the surrounding area is B2, kind of to the west and the south, and B3 to the north, and then a little bit of R1B, small state district, to the east of that parcel. So in our comprehensive plan, land use chapter three in the future land use map, um, this black arrow points to it. It's a little small dot on this map, but it's actually listed as general commercial in our future land use map. And as you can tell by the description here, um, the proposed zoning of B3 fits in um, exactly as intended as general commercial in our comprehensive plan. So the staff analysis, um, the area is urbanizing, as I mentioned, and it's surrounded by city limits. An annexation agreement is not gonna be required as part of this annexation. It is proposed, the proposal is consistent with public health, safety, and welfare, our city annexation policies, and the comprehensive plan. And staff will be recommending approval of the annexation and the B3 general commercial district. That concludes my presentation. Great. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah, I have. Go ahead. Hey, Amy, um, it's kind of hard to tell from the picture in our packet, but I wondered if the car wash that's along Woodgate, is any of that inside this property? No. Okay, so this is it's just that vacant kind of triangle of land. Yeah, where you see all the signs right now posted. Perfect. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Murphy, did you have some clarification you wanted to? Oh, he's gone. He was there in his comment. I think he was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to, I guess, remind that, yeah, or if there's any of the public listings, we've been talking to a lot of residents about this. Um, but this is just the, the hearing portion. Um, you know, a little more, we go into a little more detail um, at the Planning Commission um, when the zoning and the actual annexation stuff gets set there. Um, but just wanted to chime in with that. That is a great reminder to the process. So we, we are setting a schedule and that if the public wants to comment about the actual annexation or the proposed zoning, that would take place at the planning commission meeting. But tonight the vote is simply about the schedule. Right. That, that being said, if there's no more questions from council, I will ask if we do have any public comment about the schedule. Do we have any folks in our Zoom waiting area who wish to speak? I see none, Madam Mayor. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, in that case, it would be appropriate for a motion. Madam Mayor, I've uh, moved to adopt resolution 2020-20 as presented. I'll second okay. that. We have a first and a second. Is there any further discussion or points for clarification by council? Seeing none, uh, please vote. Okay, great. We're back from our vote and that passed unanimously to set that um, schedule. The next item on our agenda tonight is item 10, the Unrhyme Edition 2 Annexation. And the council will hold a hearing on the annexation of the Unrhyme Edition 2. I will turn it over to Senior Planner, Amy Schultz. All right, thank you. And do you see my presentation? Not yet, we see you. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, it's coming, I think. There we go. Now we can see it. All right. 
I'm just going to leave it on that same view again instead of messing with it this time. <laughs> All right. So the following is the annex annexation schedule for the unrined edition number two. On August 17th, we had the council work session overview. September 1st was the resolution to set a hearing date. On September 9th, we had the planning commission zoning hearing. And then tonight is the reading of the annexation hearing and the annexation ordinance and the first reading of the zoning ordinance. And then October 20th will be the second reading. So this map shows the location of the Unrhine addition. It's this little orange slither of a parcel that goes north and south, and then just a little bit to the east and west, and the black arrow shows that parcel. Um, it's actually located just west of Townsend Avenue, and it's between Odell Road and Ogden Road. So this parcel, it's shown here on this map by this yellow outline. It is 0.87 acres. It's within the city's urban growth boundary, the city water and city sur sewer service area. The area is urbanizing and more than one sixth of the perimeter is contiguous to the city limits. The annexation of this property is actually being done to clean up an orphan parcel of land that was not annexed into the city in 2002 with the parent parcel, which is the parcel directly to the east. Um, this orphan parcel was actually added by court order to the parent parcel back in 2008, and this remained in the county since that time, so we're just cleaning up that um, little orphan parcel of land there. So as you can tell on this zoning map, um, the zoning of the surrounding area is B2. That's what the parent parcel is actually zoned, so that's what they are recommending for zoning for this parcel so that it's all zoned the same. And there's B3 general commercial in the area as well as P public to the west. That's our the river area. So the B2 highway commercial district is intended to provide for businesses oriented to serving the motoring public. This district provides for the convenient exchange of goods and services along the major thoroughfares of the city. And on September 9th, that the planning commission meeting, they did recommend approval of the B2 zoning for this parcel. This map just shows the annexation map for your reference and what it, the actual parcel looks like. There's kind of an odd shape there. So in our comprehensive plan um, land use chapter, this little parcel of land is actually listed as either general commercial and also some of it is under parks and open space. And this fits in nicely as well with the um, recommended zoning for the parcel. So in our analysis, an annexation agreement is not being required for this annexation. The area is urbanizing and more than one six is contiguous to city limits, which makes it eligible for annexation. The proposal is consistent with public health, safety and welfare with the city's annexation policies and with the comprehensive plan. As I mentioned, the planning commission recommended approval of the B2 zoning at their last meeting and therefore staff recommends approval of the annexation and the B2 highway commercial district. Thank you very much. Any questions? Sure. Thank you. Um, are there any questions <clears throat> about this um, annexation and zoning? Okay, so this is a multi-step process tonight um, and we will accept public comment at each piece of the process. Um, so we first we have a resolution that is a finding of fact. Then we have an ordinance that's the first reading to annex the property. And then we have an ordinance that is the first reading to zone the property. And at each of those stages, we'll have public comment and we'll have a the city council vote. So if there's not questions from council, then I would take public comment about resolution 2020-21, which is the finding of fact for the annexation. I see none, Madam Mayor. Okay, then next we have ordinance 2509 first reading and this is council consideration of ordinance 2509 on first reading which is an ordinance for the annexation of the unrhyme addition two and before i open a public hearing i'll ask if any counselors have a motion oh i do want to do a motion thank you i was uh, i was i move that we pass resolution 2020-21 second Okay, we got a first and a second on the, we do, we have three votes on this process. Okay, go ahead and vote.
Okay. Okay. Um, that motion passed unanimously. And now we're back to continue with the, the process. So we're on ordinance 2509, which is the first reading of the annexation. And during this part of the process, we will hold a public hearing. So I will officially open the public hearing and ask if there's any public comment for this ordinance 2509. I see none, Madam Mayor. Okay, then I'll close the hearing and I will request a motion. Mayor, uh, go ahead, Don. I'll make a motion to pass ordinance 2509 on the first reading as presented. Second. We've got a first and a second. Any further concerns? Okay, please vote. Great, thank you. And that uh, uh, motion passed unanimously. So now item 11 is ordinance 2510, which is the first reading. And this is council consideration of ordinance 2510 on first reading an ordinance of the city of Montrose, Colorado, providing for the zoning of the Unrhyne addition to as B2 highway commercial district um, and senior staff um, senior planner Amy Sharp has presented this information to council um, and I will open a public hearing if there's any comments from the public. So that hearing is open. I'm seeing none, Madam Mayor. Okay, I'll close the hearing. Are there any additional comments or concerns or questions from council? And then we can do a motion. Move to pass ordinance 2510 on first reading and is presented. Second it. Great, we have a first and a second. Any further questions or deliberation? Please go ahead and vote. Thank you, that passed unanimously. Next on our agenda tonight is item 12, which is 2020 Sanitary Sewer Cured in Place Hype Bid Award. And this is council consideration of an award recommendation for the 2020 Sanitary Sewer Cured in Place Hype Bid. I will ask Utilities Manager David Reese to tell us a little bit about this tongue twister. We can't hear you, David, you got on mute. Okay. Thank you, Mayor and City Council members. Um, tonight before us, we have the uh, consideration of the bid award to in situ form technologies um, for our cured in place sewer lining program. We've been using this process for several years and it's um, a low cost method of basically restoring the structural integrity of the sanitary sewer pipes by installing a pipe inside of the existing pipe. Um, and we, we've used um, a number of contractors over the years. Um, previously, we've used Granite Inliner for this, but they were unable to complete the project this fall. And so we bid this out um, here a few weeks ago and in situ form was the only bid that we got on the project. And they were well within the budget for the project. Um, so we are recommending a uh, award not to exceed $200,000 um, to in situ form to complete the um, 2000, or 20, 2020 um, sewer rehab project. With that, I'll take any questions. Is this different than the pipe bursting where you put something in and then bust out the outer shell? In this case, does the old pipe stay intact with just a new pipe inside of it? Yes, the, the old pipe stays intact. Um, once the, um, the new pipe cures out, it basically um, restores the, um, it, it, maintain, it reestablishes the structural integrity of the pipe um, as if the old pipe wasn't there, but the old pipe actually does stay intact around the, around the new pipe. Is it very thick? I mean, but it, can you only do this so many times and does that keep decreasing the, the diameter or is it not very thick? The, the liner is um, between five and six millimeters thick. So it's um, fairly thin, um, much similar to uh, a plastic uh, PVC sewer pipe. 
Okay, thank you. So it's similar to taking the glue inside of a bottle and letting glue dry on the inside of the bottle. Yes, very similar. Any other questions for our utilities manager? I don't see any, so I would accept the motion. Mayor, I'll make a motion to award the bid for cure in place lining of sanitary sewers for to instant form technologies LLC for not to exceed the amount of two hundred thousand dollars. Second. Great, we have a first and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. And that motion passed unanimously. Moving on, the next item on our agenda is item 13, staff reports. Are there any department heads who wish to update council about anything tonight? And after we check in with them, I'll come over to your table. I'm seeing none, Madam Mayor. Okay, great, thank you. Then I'll turn it over to the city manager, assistant city manager, and our city attorney. Anything from any public information, anything we need to know? I don't have anything tonight. Great. Next is city council comments. Um, and I'll just go down the line. Uh, no. I just like to comment. I think Michaela and Kaylee are doing a great job with the youth council, and it's so impressive to deal with these young people, see their intuition and their interest level. I'd like to thank you for that. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, then I'll take this opportunity to remind all of the community that City Council will be meeting tomorrow night at five thirty. Um, to walk the La Raza Trailhead that, near La Raza Park to walk um, the, near the trail at North 9th Street. If you've been following along, you know that we recently talked at a work session about doing some sidewalk improvements in the area, and Council felt it would be very helpful to see the sidewalks and to hear from community members that live in the neighborhood about which parts of the sidewalk infrastructure would most um, make the most sense in terms of what we look at doing with um, city budget. So we'll be meeting tomorrow. The public is invited to join us. And I know our community outreach um, manager has been out there letting, getting the word out in that particular neighborhood. But anyone from the community is welcome to join us. And that's at 5.30 tomorrow. And we're meeting at the trailhead at North 9th Street. So I think that's it thing to look forward to. Okay, great. Well, I think that would be the end, so I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Well, let's do that by acclamation. Thank you very much if you joined us tonight. We appreciate it, and uh, thank you, everyone.